Honesty and integrity are two values that are pushed, are taught so often in martial arts. And yet, in fight sports, which all include some form of martial arts, we often see people cheating, people trying to take advantage of the system to get the win. It disappoints me greatly, and today we're gonna to talk about two fighters who were caught and suspended for cheating, and what I think of each situation, and which form of cheating I found worse, I think is more of a violation. fighters we are going to be talking about today are number one Antonio Margarito a boxer who is very high level fought Pacquiao fought Cotto personally one of my favorite boxers actually just looking at him stylistically I love his forward approach the second fighter we are going to talk about is TJ Dillshaw former UFC bantamweight champion now both these fighters super high level. There have been many other athletes within the world of fight sports that have cheated, but I chose to focus on these two guys because they got a lot of publicity, a lot of news coverage when they were found cheating and both were found guilty and ended up getting suspended. Antonio Margarito for one year and Delsha for two years. That is a long time when you're looking at a professional athlete's career. And a lot of people talk about ring rest. Well, that right away brings ring rust into your career if you believe in that sort of thing. So let's break down each situation and then I'll have you guys choose and give my opinion on which of these infractions is worse. So we'll start with Antonio Margarito. He was fighting Miguel Cotto and absolutely battered him in the later part of the fight, ended up taking the win. Then in his next fight, there was so much hype around this guy, he was fighting Shane Mosley and Shane Mosley's cornerman came in to watch Antonio Margarito get his hands wrapped and noticed apparently something of a powder residue on the hand wraps and it's something called plaster of Paris where when it's on the hand wraps it doesn't make them hard until moisture starts to mix with it and then it gets very hard now the benefit to having a hand wrap plaster casting essentially is that when you throw you don't need to squeeze your hand as much and when you don't need to squeeze your hand as much you can throw with more speed but still initiate or implement more power now I don't even know if there was a hundred percent proof that he was guilty of this because number one it could have been his corner and number two when I looked into it I couldn't find concrete evidence that he was actually utilizing plaster of Paris but still it's not a good look for the fighter not a good look for his cornerman and I believe Antonio Margarito's cornerman ended up getting suspended indefinitely from boxing in the state of California and I believe when you get suspended in one state very often all the other states will follow their lead and they won't let you fight in those states as well. So essentially you are banned from fighting in the States. So essentially you are banned from fighting in all of the United States, which is often very important. Now next, let's move into Dillshaw. What did he do? Well, he got suspended for two years for using PEDs. Now the thing that I found very interesting about this situation is he tested positive, obviously that's what usually happens, but then he went on the record and said that he had been using for a long time, which meant all his previous fights or many of his previous fights, he was probably using the PEDs as well. Now when we look at something like this, this is one that really upsets me because PEDs, if you don't already know, are performance enhancing drugs. You're injecting or ingesting, I'm not even sure how you go about doing it, but you're putting something in your body that is gonna make you recover faster, it's gonna allow you to train harder, and therefore you're gonna be a stronger athlete. And obviously, these guys want to win so bad that they are willing to put their body through the use of PEDs, which I can't assume is gonna be healthy for you long term, but even more so, they're willing to put their career, their reputation on the line to get those wins. Now, obviously that doesn't justify it. I would never go about cheating to get a win. I wanna know that when I get a win, I earned it. It wasn't through the use of something else or you know, somehow undermining my opponent, but I found this one very interesting in the fact that when we look back and we go, okay, this guy won the UFC title and defended it, but every time he might've been using these performance enhancing drugs, I don't understand how we don't go back and end up reversing decisions. It's been seen many times in fights where somebody takes a win and then it was found out they were using marijuana and the fight decision gets reversed around to a no contest. So when TJ Dillshaw openly admitted that he had been using performance enhancing drugs for such a long time, I don't understand why you don't go back and go, okay, you know what? Your last 10 fights, 
if you're admitting to using them for that length of time, these are all turned to no contest, which essentially would strip you of any recognition of holding a UFC title. So obviously you guys can see where I'm heading in this discussion. If I was to look at the two infractions and try and list out which one I think is more severe than the other, obviously the PEDs for me are gonna be much more severe. And how do I look at this? How did I determine that? Well, I went, okay, if somebody asked me, you're gonna fight one of these two guys tomorrow and you're gonna have to decide which form of cheating you want to face, I would go 100%. Give me the guy with the plaster hand wraps. Now, in K1, back in the day, if somebody missed weight, they would give them a bigger glove. So you have to fight with a little bit of a disadvantage. The bigger the glove, the less likelihood you're going to be able to knock your opponent out. And now, if we look at you know putting plaster casting on somebody, it's going to make them hit a little bit harder or feel like they hit a little bit harder because they'll be able to throw really fast and still get that thwap. But to me, I would take that guy 10 out of 10 times in the situation that I had to choose between a PED opponent and an opponent who has different hand wraps. The person who's taking the PEDs, like we said before, it's gonna improve their training sessions, which is gonna make them stronger and faster. It's gonna improve their recovery, which is gonna allow them to train harder every time. And it's probably gonna increase their muscle mass overall. So you are fighting somebody who just has such a massive unfair advantage. I would probably even take an opponent with four ounce gloves over an athlete who's using PEDs. Give me an opponent, I have 10 ounce gloves, they have four ounce gloves, I will take that guy before I fight somebody who is using performance enhancing drugs. I do not see a need for this. I think the ban for using these type of drugs, essentially, they're drugs, they're gonna help you. If you are taking something like that, you should be removed from fight sports completely. That is just my opinion. I would love to know what you guys think about this. If you had to choose between one or the other, or which infraction, let's say that, which of these infractions do you think is worse? Put it down in the comments below. Is it the PEDs or is it the plaster of Paris? Both of these are terrible. They obviously do not make the athlete look good in any way, but I think Antonio Margarito coming back going, okay, you know what? I'm gonna make sure I have a different cornerman who's not gonna put that in my wraps, or he still says, okay, you know what? No, I was never doing this to begin with. Just let me resume my career. I did my one year suspension. I say, okay, fair enough. For Dillshaw, when I see him fight, I'm still kind of questioning why he's allowed back because I go, okay, yes, you served your two years, but all the fights before should have been flipped to no contest and you should have to start again and work your way up. But again, my opinion, let me know what you think in the comments below. Guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like, of course, get subscribed, and as always, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.